still figuring out how to use threads, but you can follow us at Y254 channel. I also still got threads, by the way, at uh, Brian Circle 101 and the rest of the platforms. And this is the last conversation of the day, and uh, we'd love to also hear and sample your feedback as we continue to interact with our guest who is already live with us in studio. She is uh, Beatrice Vicky. She's a journalist and uh, in journalism, of course, radio. TV and many other things, but she's going to tell us who she is and what she does and also her journey through media. Karibu sana, Beatrice, and good morning. Good morning to you, Brian. Beatrice Vike. You know, when I, when I saw the name, uh, the first thing that I, I, I thought of next was Jackie Vike, mm -hmm. the actress. I was like, I was even asking Benja, are they related? Uh, like, but when I met you, you told me, nah. You've never, you, in fact, you've never met her. <laughs> no, I haven't. But, but you're a fan of hers? Yeah, I am, of course. All right. I'm looking forward to meeting her and ask her, like, how did she get the name? All right. How did she get the name or how did you, <laughs> no, how, did <laughs> how do you share <laughs> the same name? How Good did one. she? But I think we're related. Yeah. One day I'll ask her. Good one. Mm -hmm. yeah, she might be your sister, your big sister. She or could be. Your cousin. No, sister, right. no, we would have no, known. <laughs> sister. You know, nowadays, you, you, you might even find you, you are triplets, but the other triplet is in another country. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Situations. Uh -huh. But anyways, Karibu Sana, great Asante. to meet you. So tell us a little bit about your journey, your story, and how did you become a journalist, the biggest and most important profession of all in the world. Mm -hmm, it is. Although yeah. most people don't, don't seem to think so. Mm. You see, the, like in school, our yeah. teacher used to tell us that uh, those people who uh, go the media way are those who failed in school. I didn't understand mm. why. Yeah. So we like don't take up these uh, careers, big, big careers like engineering, medicine right. and stuff like that. So yeah. anyway, my name is Beatrice Vicke. I'm right. a journalist, like you said. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done uh, broadcast journalism. Right. So it features both radio and TV. Mm -hmm. Uh, apart from uh, journalism, which is my major, of course, uh, I've done as well admin work, secretariat and HR. Uh -huh. I secretariat and HR, meaning yeah. that all the callers say, on and my emails and all the A lot of them, and it's a oh. lot of work. Yeah, so you, you worked at a, at a HR company before? Or just a general corporation? It's actually something I'm still doing right now. Oh, you're still doing it? It's like you yeah. now your current job. I'm a jack of all trades, oh yeah. Oh, my goodness, okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I've done HR and secretariat. Uh -huh. uh, I have a podcast as well. Right, a podcaster. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's called oh. The Safe Space. The Safe Space. Yeah. Uh, why the name The Safe Space? Because it's a safe space where we get to talk about everything without judgment. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, oh, so that is the byline, the description of yeah. the podcast. Yeah. Uh, which one is your recent, uh, in, let's say, relevant topic of discussion in your Mongolia? Mental health and uh, femicide. Uh -huh. yeah. What did you guys point out in the podcast? Uh, mostly it was, uh, you know, with the femicide having uh, risen recently, mm -hmm. uh, the cases are so many. So we wanted to relate femicide and mental health issues. Yeah. Because uh, I was listening to someone who said most of the time we are quick to judge the people who kill, but we don't understand maybe the background and what led them to being who they are. Right. They could be dealing with men mental issues from way back then. It's not like mm -hmm. they're just on a spree to kill because they love it. Mm. So they are dealing with mental issues sometimes, and yeah. maybe those people who are uh, the perpetrators, they yeah. also need to be helped through these kind of situations. So mm. we dwell mostly on the victims and say and femicide, but what about the perpetrators as well? Yes, uh, yeah. like what are we doing about it? And yes. sometimes it's good to even trace the root cause of yeah, a problem yeah, 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 before treating mm. the surface disease, yeah. which I you feel see. like a lot of people do not pay attention. We to might that much. build a lot of jails for them. Mm. We will take them and they to still come out or but still kill other, someone like in jail. five or yeah. ten Mataras out there who are still doing right. the same thing. But mm -hmm. what are we doing about them mm. and trying to like just nice? Yeah, that was a good uh, uh, conversation. Like yeah. looking at it on the other side, on the other which side, I feel like yeah. most of the people just paid attention to this yeah, other side. Yeah, true. Right, interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, journalism for me, I believe journalism is a business. It's a trade, and you must make money out of it. Apart from just being talented and having a voice or a face mm -hmm. or both of them, there's mm -hmm. people that I believe I have a both face and a voice for radio. Oh. Uh, is <laughs> not a compliment, but just normal to me. Okay. But uh, apart from having a face and a voice for mm -hmm. radio mm -hmm. as well, it's a business and it's a trade. Yeah, yeah. It and I usually say. Uh, in it, you're networking with people and you must grow. Mm -hmm. And it's a journey and an experience. So for you, um, when did you officially start walking down that journey? And what are some of the tidbits of it 
that you picked up across that have mine finally landed you here on this set? <laughs> you see, when I was going to school, and yeah. actually while in school with uh, many of my schoolmates, Ukienda uh, pale, you have this mentality that I'll, I'll get through this period of uh, schooling and then I'll get probably a big job at a, a big radio station or a big TV station, which doesn't happen always. Right. You see, uh, for you to learn that big job, you lack also plays. Mm. As much as you have the talent, the face and everything, you're right. also lucky because how many uh, journalism students do you know, do you know of? Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. many journal mm -hmm. journalist schools do you know of? So we right. have trained a lot of journalists, mm -hmm. but these jobs are not necessarily there so that mm -hmm. you'll just finish school and get this big job. Right. So you also have to think outside the box. As much as I'm doing this, what else can I do? Maybe in the same direction, in the same line, that is going to earn me money, like you said, it's a business. Yeah. Yep. Right. But uh, yearly, we, uh, at every university or every facility or just a higher learning institution, then I channel out hundreds of thousands mm -hmm, of yes. students, mm -hmm. not just journalism mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, like you said, uh, I believe opportunities are there, mm -hmm. but now that with the era of uh, digital, mm -hmm. you know, there's something now called digital journalism. Yeah. Uh, you, now we'll talk about your podcast, mm -hmm. which is I believe also part of the digital journalism, is. which is now a thing that has taken over you know, digital media mm -hmm. or others call it electronic media. Yeah. I think there's even some institutions that offer it as a, as a major. Yeah, electronic yeah. media as a full course it's journalism time, course. Yeah, yeah. It's about time, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, how did you finally start now reaching out to, uh, let's say, pr practicing stations mm -hmm. or even practicing uh, facilities that finally gave you an opportunity to start? You know, you mentioned to me off the air you are a news writer. Mm -hmm. And then at some point you went to an online radio station, mm -hmm. became a show broadcaster, like how did that um, morph for you? So I'm an alumni of KMC and um, you know okay, KMC, KMC that is Kenya Institute, Kenya Institute of Mass, Institute of okay. mass Communication okay. right. and you know KMC obviously it's the biggest uh, media school in Kenya right. and w they have this um, I would say it's almost like an, a, an, a requirement when you finish school you have to be taken to a KNA Mm -hmm. office for you to work there for a KNS period of three Kenya months. News Agency. Yeah, right. okay. for three months. And then we, once you're done, then you'll go for your own internship any right. other place you may want to. Right. So, so you enrolled for a diploma or a degree? A diploma. All right. That so took how many years? Two three or years. three? Okay. Three years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was lucky because uh, coming from KMC, I had to be taken to a Kenya News Agency um, institution where I had to work for three months. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I went back to school. After school is when I went for internship some other place. Right. So was it easy getting an internship? Yeah. It was easy for you to yeah, get an internship? Yeah, because the school gets it for you. Oh, the school provides? Yeah, oh, the KNA one. Oh, oh, the KNA, Kenya yeah. News Agency. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, uh, it's like you're guaranteed once you're, you're guaranteed, there, once you're guaranteed you're there, to get you're, an internship. You're going to work in a KNA Ken Ken A Kenya News Agency. Because yeah. I've heard stories of somebody who graduated years ago, they've never managed to get an internship mm -hmm. or an attachment either way, you know. Yeah, so once I went to KNA, KNA is majorly print media. Right. And you know, doing broadcast journalism, I didn't like specify. Yeah. Uh, what or, major? Or, or yeah, what I didn't major in print, in right. print media. Mm. So it was kind of tough, challenging mm. as well. What are the challenges that were there? <sighs> A lot of them meeting mm. deadlines. <laughs> yeah. You know, you have to have like three or four stories in a day. Uh -huh. And then as you are you are journalist yourself, you know it's not that easy. Mm -hmm. So you have to go on the ground, look for stories, and then come right. write. Uh -huh. And by the time it's four, you need yeah. to have all your four stories, right. send them to your uh, editors, yeah. which is not easy. Mm. What could have happened if you didn't meet the deadline? Hmm. Nothing serious, but you know, uh, as a serious journalist, you need to like push yourself. Because otherwise, why are you there? If you're yeah. just going to like sit down and think no mm. one is going to beat me up because I haven't finished the four stories or stuff. Right. You need to like push yourself so that you mm -hmm. become that. Right. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So that shaped that part of your news writing. Yeah, it did. It really did. Yeah. Meeting the deadlines and looking for stories as well because you have mm. to network with other journalists who are in these other media houses so that right. if you didn't go to a certain place and they went there, they'll be able to send you uh, maybe a, a bite so right. that you write a story from the bite because right. uh, that's exactly what you're going to do. They just record 
come listen and write the stories. Yeah. So if someone is going some other place and you couldn't go to that place, maybe it's far away, and you go to this other place, you can be able to interchange bites and write right. the stories from the bites. Right. So the networking is very important. Yeah, in the, in the journalism business, yeah. which I feel like a lot of people do not, uh, this is my opinion here, a lot of people do not take it seriously. Mm -hmm. But yeah, literally this space requires you to know some people yeah, true. Yeah, for you to get somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Apart from j them just seeing your voice or hearing your your uh, your, your shows on, on the air, yeah, yeah, at least true. some networks to help mm -hmm. you get to the next one. Very important. All right, so for you now, um, in your experience, so, uh, I believe, um, I think this is in Journalism 101. We are told a great journalist is a good reader, a good writer, mm -hmm. and a good speaker. Mm -hmm. So which one of you developed the most? The speaking part, the reading part, or the writing part? I would say all of them. All of but them. But mostly um, speaker. Because while in school, we used to do school projects. And every time, they would pick me to like do the voiceovers, yeah. do everything. Mm -hmm. And the teacher noticed me because of that. Because all, of, all the time we would do a project, he'd be listening and be like, I like the voice. Who is behind this? Who is behind that? Right. So every time now, they used me to do all the yeah. voiceovers. So it gave you that attention. <laughs> yeah, you became <laughs> a mini celebrity. Uh, yeah, true. So right. that also made me work in the school studio, you see, and radio. Yeah. Oh, you see, and radio, I think it's big. Yeah. It has produced a lot of good people that I yeah, know yeah. who are so in this other side as well. Because yeah. of that, I worked in ECN radio. I didn't uh -huh. go looking for it. They just uh -huh. came and said, do and we want like, to who is this? <laughs> Who, who has the best voice? I think Oprah Winfrey is among the best female voices in, in broadcasting. If you do your research among best voices in journalism mm -hmm. in the world, they were, they were like, who is this Kamini Oprah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they came to you running and then... So you were given a show to run? Yeah, I was given produce? a show to run. Uh -huh. to run Host yeah. production? Host. All right. So uh, at first I co-hosted and then at some given point I was given the show to host. Yeah. Yep. Nice. And then you gravitated towards another, you know, uh, 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 is it another employer as well? Yeah, another still employer. Media? Yeah. So what happened in between then you transition? So ECN, ECN was in school. I did it while in school. And then after school, I went for Kenya News Agency. I did print. Didn't like it that much, although I was good at it. Mm -hmm. And then after KNH, I went to Best Radio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So radio also was kind of challenging because at first I started as a producer. Mm -hmm. And production is not that easy dealing with people, having to tell them what to do. Sometimes they don't listen, you know, so you're always in wrangles with people. Not that you like it, but they just come because you want your work to be perfected, but some people don't see it that way. Mm. So I did a bit of production in radio. After production, I started hosting. Mm -hmm. I hosted a TBT show. Um, the TBT meaning throwback. Throwback Thursday, Thursday. yeah. Okay. So my boss liked it. They gave me a gospel show. Right. Uh, cool beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. is a good thing because me too. Me too. I've been on or I've been on an evening drive or on a gospel show. Okay. You to your party maybe feature, but to kenda tum tanda vezuri ni sanchi A lot of people like hiding. I was yeah. So you started preaching. I uh -huh. did a gospel show. Right. After a while, we lost our host who was hosting the entrepreneurship show. So right. I also stepped in. So every uh -huh. time like there was this show, I could start it, then someone else comes and picks. So right. I started yeah. a lot of shows that people came so in. So it's like you created them. Yeah, but now the gospel uh -huh. show became uh -huh. my show. So right. I ran with the gospel show up to the end. So it was your brainchild. Yeah. Uh, but you're no longer there. I'm no, no longer more. there. So is it because you're done with, the, with that part? And then let me also ask you before you answer that, did you love the radio part more or the other side more? Which one did you like? The, the print most? and radio. Yes. Did you like radio? I love radio. Oh, you love radio. You love to I stay in love, radio. I love radio, yeah. Me too, I love radio. I want to <laughs> go back to radio. Oh my God, <laughs> give yes, me your spot in TV. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Okay. We'll talk about that. <laughs> so you liked radio more? I love, love radio. Yeah. Okay, Go, another question. What makes you love radio? Because um, ra if you should look at the history of radio mm -hmm. and its evolution, mm -hmm. during World War II, yes, during World War II, radio is the most powerful tool mm -hmm. of communication in mm -hmm. terms of uh, gathering together masses, uh, telling them information about the enemy, and just general news uh, dissemination. Mm -hmm. So what were the, some of the aspects that you love about radio that are still important to you? And if you have to next... If there's somebody watching right now, maybe they'll have to pick you for the, ne for the next gig. 
if you are to pitch them yourself <laughs> as a producer, talent, radio host, and all those. Uh, what are some of the nitty gritties that are so important about radio that you learned? Like you said, it's a powerful tool of communication, and um, it like it has a very wide reach, even to like those people when you're commercialing and stuff like that, because not everyone has uh, the capability of buying a TV and stuff like that. But what I loved <laughs> most about radio, going to the media school, I I was shy kind right. of. So I didn't think I'm um, a person who could come in and, and sit in front of a camera and you know. Right. So I was like, okay, radio will be my thing. They just listen to the voice but they don't get to meet the face. Right. But uh, many people approach me and they're like, why don't you love TV? You could do well at, in TV as well because you have the right. face and the voice as well. Mm -hmm. And kidogo kidogo now going to base radio, they do live uh, mm -hmm. recordings of their okay. shows. Mm -hmm. So I had to like just, you know, get rid right. of the shyness and, and just right. put up that. So mm -hmm. now I'm not that shy anymore, but yeah. I loved radio because I could just hide behind the mic. And mm. <laughs> I also, that's also some <laughs> other thing that, uh, that yeah. I like about radio. Like it doesn't show you. Mm -hmm. so it doesn't show you. So you just yeah. get to communicate and impact the society, but they don't get to meet the person. Yeah. yeah. It left this mystery. Uh, there's somebody who called it, it's radio is a theater of the mind. Mm -hmm. uh, so it basically you're painting pictures for people mm -hmm. and they just get to imagine, hey, so who could this be? Uh, yeah, who true. is this painting pictures yeah, for yeah, people? Yeah. And then the, uh, and I also think in journalism class, uh, you're taught uh, writing for the ear. Mm -hmm. that, that means writing for radio. For radio, And then yeah. writing for the eye. Yeah, writing for TV. TV yeah. So the way you speak on TV is totally it's different, different for... Different from the way you yeah. speak for radio. So in short, on radio, you must be a, a person who has a descriptive mind, uh -huh. rich in adjectives, mm -hmm. rich in phrases, rich in expression, loud and bubbly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely, that's what that producer yeah. should be looking for. Yeah, yeah, a true. loud and a bubbly chick. Mm -hmm. Do you believe they'll get you? <laughs> <laughs> I know they're watching. Tell, trust me, they're watching. Um, yeah, I'm kind of serious sometimes, but bubbly when I need to be. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, interesting. Yeah. Okay, I pray they're watching <laughs> <laughs> and they're taking note. <laughs> yeah. All right, now uh, you you now morphed into admin work. Mm -hmm. The one you told me is it's still your current job. Yep. So what happened on this other side of journalism? I do you ditched it. I don't know if you've ditched it, mm -hmm. but I'm just asking. Did you ditch it to do admin work? Am I listening to kind of took a Oh, let me just be multifaceted because I have to now. You realize her child and admin is still part of media because. Uh, in year one in school, we did HR. Uh -huh. Year two as well, we did HR. Uh, we did entrepreneurship in, in, in year one. So those are actually kind of uh, uh, the things that made me go to that um, direction, but actually the things that gave me those jobs as well. Because I haven't like majored in secretariat in HR, but the mere fact that I did HR and I did you know, all these other things in school, I was able to be employed as mm. a, a HR admin. Yeah. So it's still part of media. It's not away from media. media. Uh -huh. Yeah. So right. I've done marketing as well. Marketing is media. Right. Yeah. Advertising, it's still media. Yes. So yeah, I do marketing, I do HR and admin work. Yeah. So what happens at in admin work? And before you tell us also what happens in HR, because mm -hmm. every, at least every corporate institution has an HR department, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, which is also like the most, it's like part of, it's like a demigod <laughs> of the company, <laughs> Apoco HR, because they're in charge of hiring, firing, yeah, yeah, and even yeah. sourcing as mm -hmm, well for mm -hmm. uh, staff. Mm -hmm. yeah, so what, what happens at yours and what do you do there? Like you said, we're in charge of hiring, firing, not necessarily firing. The firing point is the thunder. <laughs> 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 Who wants to hear that been Which fired? Which is necessary though, yeah. because if you're not Oh, it's necessary it for a company yeah, to is. fire some people. Yeah, it is, because some okay. people just, you know, don't do their work as they should, so okay. what do you do? But it's not something that uh, we like doing. Yeah. Only when it's necessary. Mm -hmm. but have you done it so far? We shouldn't be able no, to. I have it. It's so unfortunate <laughs> that you'll not be a part of this team. <laughs> I have it. And then they later on file, <laughs> they fire back. They'll be like, uh, but if you look at my performance, I've been <laughs> really doing excellently. Uh, why are you firing me? You know, in I can only imagine that <laughs> delivering that uh, bad message. It's a bad message, seriously. It is, Nobody wants to see you've been fired. Mm -hmm. Mm. But you don't just wake up someday and tell a person we no longer need you. Yeah. you at least it has happened in this space. I know, but it's, it it's, it's, it, it's not supposed to in happen that way, space, given yeah. my experience. Because mm. if you have done something wrong, we first of all give you a shock letter. 
which is more a like show? show cause letter. Or show cause letter. Yeah, which so means you need mean? to explain yourself. Maybe All you right. did this because of this. You have a reason as to why you did what you did. Mm. And then after the show cause letter, we give you a warning letter. All right. So after the warning letter is when we can't give you a termination letter. Because if yeah. you didn't do what we asked you to do in the first place, yeah. now we have no reason to keep you. So right. it's, it just doesn't happen like, na mka kesho na kumbia na go home. No. Yeah. So we have to like go through all these stages Still and make it. sure that yeah. you're not good for our company. Oh, and if also, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's those, I don't know, we can call them toxic work spaces where one of the could after tafta scandals work is a build up uh -huh. so that at the end of the day, like it, it just throws you out itself. Yeah, what happens can. in such instances? They well, can. this, for example, this employee has been diligent mm -hmm. in his or her duties. I can have very clean slate. Mm -hmm. At, uh, uh, some of the stories you even said in media, some of the people who were fired, they were not even prepared for like the way you're talking. They, there was like a course letter mm -hmm. and then the one you said and then mm -hmm. finally termination. You mm -hmm. text, ultimate <laughs> post you add Instagram. <laughs> so and so it's no longer part of this and you're like, wow. Mm -hmm. Is this a dream or something? Mm -hmm. Kumbe, it's happening. Yeah, it happens. You're saying that is unprofessional. It is. Yeah, and it the is. person can sue back yeah, and fight Yeah, they back. can. They can. Okay. They can. So for an employer, you just need to like go through all these stages to be on the safe side. Right. And make sure it's not just you and, mm. and your feeling. Because you, kuna wale employer wenye, wata kuchukia tu for no good reason. Yeah, but now there's this. Oh, unaza chukia kazini. <laughs> the, you know, Kunaizi is to the relationships the, the, right, uh, the bosses and, and employees. And yeah. then maybe you like don't like your boss and you tell him and then they just start frustrating you. Mm. So kuna cases kama hizo. So kuna mtu aneza yeah. kuchukia because of that. And yeah. then they just like m frustrate you so that mm. you we mwenyata uneza resign before they even give you that one yeah. letter or whatever. I've had close friends who resigned from big media houses mm -hmm. sometimes it's not what it looks like you mm -hmm. could see uh, someone coming on tv or hearing them on radio but there's a lot behind that company yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. true yeah so uh, i read somewhere something about work politics now that we're talking about stories of professionalism mm -hmm. uh, so how can somebody survive professionally in a workspace that uh, deemed let's just call it toxic because i had already said the word <laughs> uh, how can somebody survive in a toxic work environment also let's define toxic what exactly is a toxic work environment mm -hmm. and what are some of the things that are happening in this workspace that could definitely you know uh, i've heard i think also yesterday's guest that was here with uh, one of my co-presenters and it was val mm -hmm. he gave an interesting story in one of his responses to the uh, question val asked unless some of these people can come to work they were perfectly fine mm -hmm. i took a home at al kwana al kwata na soma bible at a kiss kiss a podcast mm -hmm. i keep a job mood yak in a change mm -hmm. i got resentful to some of the colleagues mm -hmm. and then i took a job mm -hmm. so i was wondering what could be possibly going on in such a workspace so there's uh, a lot that uh, comes to play when it comes to toxicity in workplaces mostly kuna um, relationships at work Probably you're, you're eyeing a certain lady and there's also a colleague who's eyeing the same person. And then you get mm. to clash because right. now maybe the lady might like you and not like him. And mm. he will think maybe you are the problem. So you right. see, going forward, you guys are going to have a very toxic relationship. Ah. And working together might become hard. Mm, also, kuna zile long working hours with mm. very major pay. People mm. get to complain and, you know, who complain kila sa, you know, make yeah. every other person see their job as right. something and uh, it's not working for them. Mm. So, kuna hizo, kuna um, bosses who just like, awajui kuongea na their employees. Awajui mm. kuongea mm. Like, they would just throw words, insult and stuff like that. So, oh. they don't talk to you as mtu mwenye unafa kuangeleshwa. Right. Because they don't see you on the same level as them. He's yeah. your employer, obviously. Like professional talk. Yeah. Ile like, yes. You yeah, are here, you've done da -da 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 -da. this. You've done this. I don't like it. There's yeah. a way you can tell someone, kama mekosea, I don't mm -hmm. like this, this, and this. That rather than just shouting and insulting and doing all that kind of stuff. Mm. So, you see that contributes to the toxicity in a workplace as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And is it possible for people to be in cahoots? As in, they, another word is ganging up. 
literally they yeah, ganged up to be friends very, with very. this one and then they hated this one it's very <laughs> and then this other one starts speaking uh, it's very possible two three things and then because it becomes like a whole community and it spreads yeah, yeah, i've also heard of stories like you joined my enemy to hate me i'm a don't i'm a just because you you hate me no, that's <laughs> don't childish. make other people start hating me because you don't hate me that's but childish. It, it exactly happens if you're going to spaces if you're going to inherit your friend's enemies that's childish if right. your friend is going to like expect you to inherit their enemies that's childish as well mm. if you are not in good terms with so and so and i am able to speak to them and still be your friend and not yeah. be ganging up against you then it's fine just don't let you know mm -hmm. your you yeah. not being okay with him become right. also my problem as well right. so mostly i think that's childish but it's possible because yeah. maybe we are working uh in a place where like for example the work that i was doing marketing yes i went to that workplace with a friend of mine who's a very mm. good friend because we left radio together to kind of acquire kazi mm. so going to that place you know we are kind of sisters Right. So I would expect if someone is going after her, the person mm. is also going after me. But mm. it didn't happen always because she would have people she's talking to. Yes. And I'm not okay with those people, but I'll just give them their space. Yeah. Because it's not okay to limit people because you, are, you don't like so and so. Just mm. let them be them. As long as they're not doing stuff behind your back, like maybe backbiting you and stuff like that. Yeah. Also, uh, loyalty ako, na friendship enye mkonayo comes to play. So yeah, if you have this work. friend, yeah, uh -huh. if you have this friend who are, who you are loyal to, and right. you know, yeah, how you kosawa na nani, but me ni kosawa na yeah, but I'm not going to do something that's going to hurt her, then it's mm. okay. Right. Yeah. And that's how you survive mm -hmm. in workspaces. But also, somebody told me about stories that are responding to, you know, accuse accusation, false accusations. Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, mm -hmm. they they happen a lot in these workspaces. Personally, the word is hate. Yeah. I don't have another one. Mm -hmm. I hate such stories. So you are listening, Maiki, and then we are kasema. Please just leave it or leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mona tutu si exist vizuri. Alise maike kakujia kasema sujua liyonge na the politics and that chain I don't like it. It still happens though. So as a mature person you're just supposed to like listen and maybe not have so much to say about it yeah. until maybe it's affecting your work. Oh yeah. If it's Definitely not affecting it does. your work. Definitely it does. It does. So and so Alice, maybe uli ulienda maliflani you did this and that. That doesn't yeah. affect your work. You just it do your work. It can affect your if delivery. If it can. How can it? It can affect your delivery, especially if you're a person of this other side. Oh, okay. Mm, In the media. Yeah, I understand that because you have to like, you know, have yeah. that reputation and stuff like that. It does. Ha but mm -hmm. I would say those are kuskia. Don't, don't focus so much on nani alisema, nani alisema. Just do your work. If your boss is uh, happy with what you're doing, then mm. I don't think you have to listen to any other person down there. Yeah. Yeah. Right, the naysayers and <laughs> the outside voices. <laughs> yeah. They're always louder than the, <laughs> than the inside voices. Yeah, yeah. But All if right. you're good at what you do, it speaks for itself. So right. you don't have to worry about anything. Yeah, it's possible. Because I read somewhere, there's, a, there's a, I don't know who it was who, they said uh, people might hate the person, mm -hmm. but they like what, what they do. he yeah. or she does. Mm -hmm. So probably they are trying to figure out it's a hate and love relationship. In relationship, yeah. Yeah. To not pendu boys but simpendian person. So that's the issue. Yeah. And it's you. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I'm playing. Pole. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Nimapuliza. Now let's move away from that. Also, finally, as 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 we close that part, negotiating for a salary in this space is is a big thing. Negotiation for pay. Mm -hmm. uh, for for example, for a starter. Who's, uh, for example, to a miracle will happen, you pick your sim and say, hey, could you co-host mm -hmm. place Flani? Mm -hmm. How do you start the conversation about payments? Normally, it's not so easy, mm -hmm. especially given the fact that different employees pay differently. Mm -hmm. So you see, you, you're coming from this place where you're being paid. According to you, maybe you're being paid well. And mm. these other space, you might be paid even much more than you were being paid this side. Right. But you, you, you tend to gauge yourself with what you're being paid in this other side. Yeah. So when you're coming here, you'll be like, oh, nilikuwa nalipo 40,000. You know, yeah. now probably maybe this place was able to pay you maybe 100 Gs. So they'll right. maybe turn down to 60 and say, sister, sister, yeah. 60. You will be happy saying they've given you a better deal, which is 
uh, yeah. not. And you should be so, getting 100 and above. Yeah, so mm. it's important when you're going to any job space, just mm. research. A research about research the company. Research about the and company the and, and the job and maybe how much it's supposed to be paid. Maybe come a, like say for example HR work, mm -hmm. you get to gauge like HRs, how much are they paid uh, yes. on the highest side up on the lowest side up so that you're able to like place yourself somewhere, yes. maybe in the middle, instead mm -hmm. of just saying uko ni likwa na likwa. When you gauge yourself with what you're being paid on the other side, you might mm -hmm. as well just yeah. maybe devalue yourself, if I would yeah. say. Or maybe uh, like highly value yourself because these people are not able to put you in the budget. Right. So it's really hard. You just need to like do your research and give a slightly higher. <laughs> Always give a slightly higher figure. Always give a slightly higher figure. Right. Yeah. But what if your previous employer mm -hmm. was fun, was wholesomely or handsomely paying you mm -hmm. a good amount of money? Mm -hmm. And then this one, maybe they don't have... Uh, some in fact, most of the times you're not aware what they'll pay you for that job. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can use your previous job to mm -hmm. pitch. Is it possible? Yeah, can it, it work? It's, it's possible. It can work. Um, hmm. But um, kuna difference ya is also story in payments when you're going to different jobs. Maybe a job when you only talk wasn't really your passion and you're willing to like receive any amount because you're going to do something that you love you doing love, and huh? it's your passion. So you're desperate so in other words. Not necessarily <laughs> desperate. You love what you're doing. Right, yeah. And you're like, okay, anything goes as long as I'm in this in kind of space. field. Mm -hmm. But kuna wale when you wako pale because they want to like make end meets and, and yeah. pay bills and stuff like that. So you're like, mm -hmm. okay. Okay, I just have to get the highest I have to get. Right. So, I think in a very tuna different people. Right. Yeah. Um, there's, there's an interesting question there. Oh, stories are range. Mm -hmm. uh, so I uh, always have a range. Mm -hmm. Like for yeah, example, yeah. for example, uh, I've been to panels where they asked, and how much do you expect us to pay you for this job? Mm -hmm. And uh, the first thing is. The first thing that comes to your mind is your, your current empl employer or your previous, like uh -huh. you said, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're like, uh, but it, but then I read somewhere that you're not supposed to give what you're earning yeah, in yeah, your yeah, previous yeah, company yeah. or your current company. Uh -huh. But what if it's big and you're proud of it? You're like, hey, who can put a 300, but here I want to get 500. What made you leave the 300 and, and, and come to these jobs? Oh, so they'll ask that question as well. No, no, they don't ask, but you should ask yourself that. Uh -huh. So you you know, obviously, these people are willing to pay me more while right. you're leaving your 300 bo 300,000 shillings uh -huh. job and coming to this one. You know these ones are, be are better paying and stuff like that because greener pastures, you know. Uh -huh. So while you're going to this job, obviously, you know they have to pay you slightly higher than what you're getting this other side. Yeah. So that's where you're able to gauge yourself. So if it's right. 300, maybe say 400, this other side. If mm -hmm. they're not able to give you f 400, they might give you 350. Right. Yeah. All right, which is a good one. Mm -hmm. A good lesson for what you want to kazi, na mataka kwa kwa andiko. But there's, there's also internships that pay, anyways, uh, uh, that actually help now that we have the Media Council of Kenya that's uh -huh. giving paid internships to some of these uh, uh, young and upcoming journalists. It's mm -hmm. really an incredible thing. Yeah, now, let's is. move away from the work part and mm -hmm. the HR part. Mm -hmm. And now, back to you still. Uh, mm -hmm. You gravitated into stories of beauty and makeup. It's like you're multifaceted <laughs> media, HR, admin work. Admin, have we, uh, uh, have we talked about admin? HR and what admin, you do? It's Ad still HR the same admin is the same, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now your makeup and beauty part. So mm -hmm. uh, how did that happen, and uh, when did you officially start doing it? So over time, uh, I I didn't really think ahead to me. So people used to look at me and they're like, "Nani amefanya makeup ya kwangi?" Okay. Why are you asking me that? Because I'm right. the one who did it. And then you'll also go to a place and people be like, "Who dresses you up?" So yeah. fashion and makeup and everything. And I was like, okay, maybe this is something I could do, but I still uh -huh. didn't do it. Right. So uh, up until uh, 2016, I was still mm -hmm. very young, I went to my sister's wedding. Uh -huh. And um, they had called a makeup artist who was to come and do makeup and everything. So she was doing my sister's makeup and I'm like, no. Yeah. Mm, I'm just seated somewhere and I'm looking at her, I'm like, hey, apana. Is your eyebrows, then you come a mature when you're in a fire and stuff like that. Right. So I was like, no, it's my sister's big day. She has to look good. You can't yeah. just ma make up uh, Vitumba and mm -hmm. expect her to go out there looking like that. Mm -hmm. So after she had done what she had done, I went and told my sister, Pana, me, I don't think they've done what mm -hmm. it's supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So when she left, I went back to do my sister's makeup. To correct. <laughs> yeah. To back correct. from scratch. Yeah, back from scratch. <laughs> not that I had done any professional yeah. makeup and stuff. Hopefully like it was that. not dramatic. It wasn't. It was uh -huh. it turned out better than what she had done. Right. So after I did my sister's makeup, everyone to look I who call the girls and stuff, they started asking me to do their makeup as well. Right. So I did everyone's makeup, makeup. in mm -hmm. my sister's wedding. Mm -hmm. After I had done mine, of course, they saw what I had done with Because Mimi, I, there's a way I want my makeup. Staki like to like too much, you know, it just mm. has to blend in with your Oh, there can be too much makeup? Yeah. Or, or under? Or under. Or downplayed or But you'd rather much, do yeah. under than uh -huh. do too much too because much. now too uh -huh. much will. Yes. So um, I did my own makeup and then after everyone saw what I had done with mine, they're like, okay, can you do ours as well? So I did mm -hmm. also the girls who were at my sister's wedding. Right. So after that is when I thought, okay, maybe mm. I have it in me, I could do it professionally. Right. And and from Wale to Likwa now in my sister's wedding, people mm. started calling me and they're like, oh, kuna kitu flani flani, can you do this? No, they started like, giving you business. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, I can. And uh, a friend of mine who knew I was doing media also asked me someday mm. if I could do makeup for them. They were shooting a movie. Yeah. And I went and did makeup for them. So that's how I just evolved to Nika India. Mm. So yeah. I started doing makeup professionally. But it's not something I just set out to do or maybe I went to school and studied the makeup although also in media school we are taught uh, mm -hmm. that as part of journalism yeah. makeup and stuff like that so yeah. I that I started even before going to school to, to journalism do, school. To, yeah before going to journalism oh, so it's school. like your passion yeah it's something it that is. you like yeah right mm -hmm. uh, but then a lot of people actually are I downplay that because uh, even me here I have makeup but you can't notice it. Let me subtle and then That's miss. That's why I'm telling then you. Then I'm, I'm, I'm of like a darker skin uh, <laughs> shade mm -hmm. so you can't notice but yeah there's I pass through there every day. <laughs> and when I came to TV uh, when I when I when I started doing TV I was told yeah, lazima pita. I was mm -hmm. like no I'm allergic ni no hakuna allergies kwa hii profession. Yeah, you you have either have to find something that works for your mm -hmm. face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I feel like maybe a lot of people are not aware. Mm -hmm. So are there like maybe also types uh, or shades of makeup that especially them. people in the TV space mm -hmm. need to be aware of? A lot of them, by the mm -hmm. way. You actually need to make sure you find a shade that works for your skin. That's mm -hmm. Because you might find someone darker like you putting on a shade that's lighter and then you end up looking like uh, a scarecrow, sorry mm -hmm. to say. <laughs> <laughs> a clown. <Yeah. laughs> that's the word. <laughs> yeah, so you yeah. really need to find a shade that works for your skin so mm -hmm. that when you do your makeup, it blends in with the skin. Sometimes yeah. people don't even notice that you're putting on makeup until they see maybe some lipstick and eyebrows yeah. done. Right. Otherwise, apart from that, they wouldn't have noticed that you have makeup on. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you really need to find a shade that works for you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we had a conversation, I think, with uh, Diana. Shout out to her. She's uh, one of our makeup ladies. Suku, mm -hmm. makeup room. She was telling me that there's a way mm -hmm. you do makeup for mm -hmm. a person who's going to do news anchoring. Mm -hmm. And there's also makeup for somebody who's going to participate in a music video to mm -hmm. dance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just having that ability to like tell this is makeup for a TV personality mm -hmm. and this is makeup for someone who's dancing in a video. Mm -hmm. It's really a powerful thing. Like for me, I can't even notice like it's m like, yeah, you look good. Your face is amazing. Mm -hmm. I can't even notice that this is makeup for TV <laughs> and this is makeup for a video vixen. So that was really impeccable. Yeah, for uh, video vixens, they do like those tans, like a lot of, you have to like use all the, um, the sh uh, you have to use maybe concealer, you have to use foundation, you have to use powder, you have like all that. But yeah. for TV, you turn down Kidogo, maybe right. you might just use founda foundation and setting powder alone. Yeah. So that it's now too much, you yeah. get. So for vixens, you know, they need to like be out there and be seen and everything. Right. So they need to have all those. Yeah. You see, like mine, for example, I'm not putting on lashes. I'm not putting on. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So there's so much you have to like. Mm. There's so much you have to tone down when you're coming on TV. And there's a lot you have to do when you're maybe a vixen. Mm. Yeah. Um, but so, so that means that, you know, if you're a person of this other side, a person who comes to, to the camera very often, mm -hmm. or is it quite natural? <laughs> you can if you have perfect skin for that. But the thing with ladies... Or perfect we, skin. Yeah, the thing with ladies, sometimes we tend to be insecure in front of the camera. So you have to, lo to look your best. So yeah. you have to make sure that... You just want to make sure you're looking your best when you're going in front of the camera. Yeah. Otherwise, if you have uh, uh, nice skin, uh, better routine, yeah, skin care, you can just still come yeah. natural as you look here. Yeah. I have seen tutorials with Ariana and she, 
she, she really looks like she's swarming gold or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this chick, Anajita, I follow her, Anajita Elsa Majimbo. She's a uh -huh, social media Elsa, star. Yeah, I know. The way she oils herself and it's like I'm a swim qua, a whole <laughs> bottle of, of lotion <laughs> or glycerin. I was yeah. like, wow, it's really different to tell like this different shades of, you know, makeup we as well. We go through a lot as ladies when it comes to skincare. Yeah, and yeah. skincare is, is actually a big part and a big investment it in is. the beauty industry. It is. Yeah. It's, it's a very big part. Uh, but the thing with uh, skincare, men don't think they need that, but you do. I mean, yeah. everyone needs to take men care of themselves. Men don't need skincare. <laughs> me pata you hack. No, they do. Man, <laughs> they do. <laughs> if you're a man, we will offer your skincare. Do you export a medicine? <laughs> they do, actually. You know, uh -huh. you actually mentioned uh, um, uh, Rihanna, and, and I nikafikiria ni mona esa pakifanya skincare routine na Rihanna. Yeah. So I was like, okay, people need to see this. Men need to see this. Right. Except by they has a skin a skin care a skin care routine. Yeah. So you need skin care routine in a manisha nini. My boy child mko wapi abu mskie. Skin care routine in a manisha. Skin care routine ni yeah. like you wake up in the morning, you wash your face, you have uh -huh. products that you use in your face in the morning and before you go to bed as well. So yeah. as a lady, maybe as a boy, you do all you have to do. You have your toner, you have your, from the, um, I mean, your toner, you have your uh, moisturizers, you have, you know, all that stuff. I did scrubs. I did scrubs, scrubs, yeah. But you uh -huh. don't get to scrub every day. Scrubs, you know, una journey if it was any school, rough on the face, so you don't do it every day. You could do it maybe twice in a week. Right. But easy thing in a maybe toner, is moisturizers, the things you do every day. Yeah. So uh, asubu, if you're not going out, you just do that and then stay in the house. Um, yeah. If you're putting on makeup, you also do that and then you put on your makeup. Usiku yeah. kulala, you have to make sure you wash your face and moisturize. Yeah, moisturize yeah. before you go to sleep. Before you go to sleep. Yeah. Hey, you're ni kazi mingi. <laughs> but for me, I believe in a good soap, like invest in a good shower gel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it works. I think that has worked for me in my career, like a good one, really expensive. Once you have it, you'll always look like you're rich even if you're not. <laughs> wow. That's my okay. hack. Salma That's skincare still. That's skincare still. Invest, <laughs> <That's skin care laughs> invest in a good shower gel. It's a gel. Wait, <laughs> 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 shower gel a bottle, kama glass ring. Anyways, TV, <laughs> TV things, TV talk. Anyway, so for people, if they want to maybe uh, get to see what you do, uh, you've not talked about your podcast a lot but yeah they, they can get to listen to you because you're about to go mm -hmm. uh, so where can they find you on social media what should they anticipate in your podcast as well your makeup part are you ready to be hired for the radio part are you pitching yourself in 30 seconds please because you're out of time this is your camera yeah okay so social media you can find me at Beatrice Vicky the presenter that's Facebook and uh, Beatrice Vicky my Facebook page as well uh, YouTube, we are found there uh, as The Safe Space. I and my friend Jen Juma, we do a podcast called The Safe Space. And um, radio, also I'm looking forward to coming back to radio as well. So if, if there's anyone out there watching and is a possible employer, I'm here. All right. Yeah. Definitely you've heard from her. And thank you so much for sharing the insights that you've got, really enlightening. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to hear you on radio. All the best. Thank you. All Thank right. You. That's where we put a period. I'm a, a full stop, not a comma. And uh, just one comment. Just one comment. Uh, and it was Timothy Ngaira. I'm a comment to say. And I say my good morning. I'm watching from Kitale. Thank you so much. And thank you for keeping us company from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. I'm Brian Sakwa. And the hashtag is at Y254 channel. At Y254 underscore channel. Palikwa Instagram. And subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. We'll definitely see you next time right here on Y in the Morning.